Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Berlin and thank you for allowing me again into your consciousness. I'll try my best to be a good guest. Today I'm going to talk about uh, navigation in dreams and because it's navigation we need to get moving. You know, when you become lucid in a dream, where do we start? We start with the scene you are in and of course we don't know where that'll be. You might be inside, you might be outside, you might be on a beach, you might be on the moon. We don't know. Now the good thing about lucid dreaming is when you become lucid, the scene you're in suddenly by becoming lucid takes on this extraordinary vividity, this mystical beauty. And when that happens, also very often, something in your scene will immediately grab your attention. There might be this like magnificent archway that's saying, come through me. I mean, you don't know. And if that happens, if something compelling happens that's drawing you in, well, follow your dream and go with that because you need to get involved with your dream. Because in the short course of any indecision, you might wake up or fall back into non-lucid dreaming. Now, I recommend, however, ground transportation has its disadvantages. So, if you don't immediately see something in your current dream scene when you become lucid that really kind of fascinates you and calls you, then I recommend, if you can do it, flying. If you're inside and you need to step outside to fly, fine, but of course if you have the confidence you can fly right through the ceiling. The great thing about flying in a lucid dream is it is so exhilarating, so enthralling, that it tends to get your mind off any anxiety and you, as you're flying along it gives you time to collect your thoughts. Did I want to do anything in my next lucid dream? What do I want to do? What do I want to see? Where do I want to go? And as you're thinking these things at the same time, your unconscious mind is delivering you all kinds of its own options, you know, pastures and, you know, swimming pools and everything. So, you, so, option, so flying is a great option. Now, uh, I need to leave flying because there's so much to cover. Let's go back to what the hazards of ground transportation are. If you decide in a dream to walk to a destination or run to a destination, notwithstanding the cardiovascular benefits to your dream body, if you decide to do that and it's not in your current dream scene, forget it. It's an exercise in futility because by walking to something that's not in your current dream scene, you are going to be accosted by ruffians, all kinds of hazards and obstacles will appear, uh, you will have sexual temptations, weather events, you name it, all kinds of things will happen in your emerging dream surroundings that will lead you astray long before you never get to where you don't even remember that you were going. So try to rule out ground, ground transportation unless it's just a dream adventure in and of itself. And you can be lucid doing that, of course, but, but, but I just demonstrated the pitfalls. Now, in ground transportation, we also have cars, bikes, boats, trains, and planes. And I'll talk about cars for just an, one example, and it, it applies to each. You know, a lot of, almost everyone that drives will say, gee, I was in my car in a dream. Well, of course you were. But usually, you're already in your car when you realize it, or you're just outside your car, it's already in your dream, and you get in it. But the reality is, if you're in your living room and you say, hey, honey, I'm going to go out and get in a car, and the car is supposed to be in your garage or the driveway or the street, it's not going to be there. If you're in a mall and you go outside, you're not going to be able to find your car in the parking lot because your dream has not yet created the car. So I've wasted entire dreams looking for my car or looking for a bathroom or looking for a classroom. It's the, it's the same phenomenon. You know, you're wasting your time on foot looking for something that hasn't been created. Now you can, if you're lucid by an act of will, have it created. But in the case of a mechanical instrument like a car, it's going to be created in a faulty fashion. The wheels will be off, the windshield will be gone, uh, you know, the, the, the gauges inside just, just register and record, uh, you know, levels and degrees of mocking you. It's kind of a waste of time. So that's the issue on vehicles. So consequently, I would say, you know, try to fly. When you do land, be aware of the hazards and pitfalls of ground transportation in your dreams. Now what about when you have a lucid dream and it starts to fade? Well when your lucid dream starts to fade, uh, there's a well-known technique often talked about in lucid dream forums on the internet, start spinning. You spin around, maybe it's an inner ear thing, I don't know, and suddenly you go from whatever scene you were in on a 
you know, on a mountain or whatever. Next thing you know, you're in Turkey. I mean, it really teleports you to some other distant, completely different scene. And that's cool, you know, but I have issues with spinning. You know, you know, and this is one of the limitations of lucid dreaming that you need to understand. If you have issues with sex, there are going to be issues in your dream. If you have issues with flying, that could be an issue in your dream. And I have issues with spinning, for example. You know, and I won't spin. Why won't I spin? Well, in my last discourse, uh, The Dynamics of Dream Emergence, I talked about how your dreams move forward by association, pattern recognition, homologous variation, and transform motion. And knowing how that works, how the principles of that phenomenon take place, I know that if I work myself up into a good spin, I'm going to look down and discover that I'm in leotards and a tutu. And then, with my luck, I'll look up and I'll see, you know, that I'm performing for a penal colony. And I don't want that to happen. So, spinning's out for me. So I had to come up with a workaround. Now, in this day and age of movies and television and video and video editing, you know, there's all kinds of transitions that take place. And when your dream fades out, that's just like a transition you see a thousand times a day in our society, you know. There's a transition in this video. The Curse of Serpent, you know, at the beginning, and he fades out. And then he fades back into me. You know, a transition. And don't think your unconscious mind doesn't recognize this. It's a, it's a, uh, it's day residue. And it, it sees it so many times it knows it. So when my dream starts to fade, I don't assume I'm waking up and have to work myself into a spin. I assume I'm in a scene transition. And I wait and sometimes, boom, I'm in a new scene. Sometimes it takes a few seconds, sometimes a little longer than I would like. And sometimes it doesn't happen at all, but sometimes spinning doesn't work either. So, you know, it's a good way to look at it. Assume you're going to wake, or assume you're going to keep dreaming, not wake up. Now, one thing you have to be aware of is very often you will dream and move into a different dream scene, and that new dream scene is going to be you dreaming that you're awake in your bed. So, you know, you need to do a reality check every time you wake up. Okay, and the final thing is uh, moving forward in your dream by acts of will. Now, you can play a wizard in your dream. Now, since I'm the Curse of Serpent, I wanted to make an apple appear. So, I was a serpent, I put my hand out, and you know, the serpent with a hand. You know, I, you know, almost sounds Hindu, doesn't it? But then I put my hand out, and an, and an apple like flashed in my hand, and then I had a solid apple. And it was even cold, like it just came out of the fridge. So, that was kind of cool. So, you can play the wizard, you know, but then you can do more elevated things of uh, willing in your dream. And I was flying along like Superman and I willed for a master to appear, an ascended master or, or a guru on the ground. I just wanted a master, someone I could talk to who was, you know, enlightened. And I figured, you know, <laughs> I'll probably look down and see Ramana Maharshi's mule. That's what I would get. But, but nevertheless, uh, I'm flying along and it's suddenly in the twilight on this hillside, I saw this like miniature Taj Mahal. You see how beautiful dreams are? I'm looking for a master, and my dream presents me with a temple glowing on a hillside. So I flew over there, but I made a mistake. I, I was so enamored by the temple grounds, I landed on the grounds, ground transportation, and somewhere I took a left-hand turn, and I never got inside. So, you live and you learn. Okay, well I better transition out of here pretty quickly. So thanks for watching. I love all of you.